Well, the add-on Spock is out. Excited to see what everybody does with it. And I expect everybody's going to be using these deep packs that they already have from Simple Sci-Fi or the awesome one that came with Spock. Because uh, you can do some really cool stuff with all of that. What I'm going to talk about today is when you get through playing with all the deep packs and you want to either create your own deep pack, which I have a separate video for, or you want to start using your assets and K-packs from KitOps with Spock, then I'm going to go through the steps on how to use that and why you might want to. I've got a lot of cool things in, in, in KitOps and K-Packs. There is a cool little K-Pack that came with Spock, if you didn't notice. It's got uh, some good materials and a cutter that you can make corridors by just uh, putting it in a big cube. That's pretty cool. Besides that, a couple of good K-Packs I recommend. Greasy Bear Sci-Fi in a Box, very good value for a bunch of uh, very complex objects that look cool together uh, in a sci-fi theme. And then there's these interior objects bundles, just lots of everyday things like couches, beds, that kind of stuff. Whether you're doing architectural visualization or, or just setting up a simple scene for a character, it's good to have this kind of stuff on hand without having to constantly search for it really good value in both of them. I'm going to take one of these sci-fi in a box objects. I'm going to grab the rack server here. I'm going to go ahead and just add insert. I don't have anything selected. I'm going to hit add insert and it's just going to put it at the world origin. I'm just going to increase the plane size by five. Now a lot of the objects or inserts in KitOps are going to have a handle like this. They have an empty or they have a cutter. We're going to work with that. We're going to just going to Hit G, X, move this off center. Just so you can appreciate how much detail is in this object, I'm going to hide the, the main body. And you can see we've got face plates. We have separate displays, controls, keys, uh, the little handles and everything. And the reason I'm mentioning this, these LED buttons, is if I want to instance this whole thing, I have two options. I can either uh, merge or join everything together as one big object so that it doesn't get confused, or I can keep this object hierarchy, but I, I need to make sure that everything has the same origin and that origin is at the bottom center. In order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and, and pick whatever the parent is, whatever the top level object is, I'm gonna pick that. And then I'm gonna go into Spock and we hit tools and hit prep and it's going to set everything to this bottom center origin that way whenever anything when it, everything is instanced by spock after it you know fills a space with it it knows how to place it all in relation to each other because they all say, share the same origin point but that's all i really need to do you can do this with many objects and we'll go over that in a second. KitOps will typically already put stuff into its own collection so i'm going to go ahead and leave that and I'm going to just hit new. I'm going to select the collection for that insert. We select the plane and I'm just going to hit pack. It's just going to take the bounding box and it's going to figure out how to fill this space with that bounding box. And then for each time that it does it, it's going to copy all of its children so that they come together. Now this doesn't look right because you're not going to have servers that close together. You're not, never going to be able to work with them. So I'm going to put a 50% margin and select the plane again. And I'm going to hit pack. You can see how quick we can do that. Now, if you merged everything or joined everything to be the same object, you could pretty quickly set up a couple of arrays and you know done something similar and set their spacing. But this is the only way that I know how to do something like this if you kept the objects individual. Fairly convenient thing that Spot can do if you want to repeat anything over a surface area and keep its hierarchy, it will do that for you. But this isn't that interesting. I want to show I want to show doing this at least with two objects. So let's go grab a shorter server rack. Make sure nothing's selected. Now that I've got two objects, I can't use these old collections. They're going to have to share the same collection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of uh, all of the objects. I'm going to hit M, create a new collection. I'll just call them servers. And now what I'm going to do is just use the one collection that has the two objects. Uh, I could have done two separate collections and had them with a one-to-one -one factor. Uh, that's this isn't really as much a how to use Spock tutorial as how to use the uh, K-Pack inserts with it. 
But so I'm going to go ahead and leave them in the same collection and hit pack. And now we get a mix of the servers. And this is where it starts to get fun. When you have a collection of things that make sense to be used together in, in a space, but you want the distribution of them to be kind of randomized. You know, you can start playing around with what the rotations are, the different algorithms, and all the fun things that Spot can do. You don't have to do much to work with it. You simply put the object in the scene, make sure you prep it, you are good to go. I've got one more thing to show. I'm gonna go ahead and clear that. Here we've got, I need to do some crazy detail on these things. All right, let's go ahead and see what this cutter looks like. So I'll zoom into this cube. I'm gonna hit add insert. And yeah, this thing's kind of big. But what it's doing, as you can see, it removes the space. This cutter is removing the space from the cube in order to have the space to put this in and be flush and have these details that sink into it. So Spock does not support cutters. I want to show how to work with them in Spock because there's there are a lot of cool assets in in uh, kit ops that have them so i'm gonna hit add insert got our insert there and the parent of it the the top level is this wireframe cutter so i, I shouldn't have to do anything with this besides i'm going to hit convert to mesh because it's going to apply any modifiers to it and do some apply transforms and stuff so we'll we'll do that in kit ops first convert to mesh then i'm going to go to spock and i'm going to do the same thing with it I'm going to hit prep in the tool. So expand tools, I'll hit prep. And it moved the origin to the bottom center. And then for all the objects, they all now have the same bottom center origin. So nothing gets confused. Now, because this already has its own collection name, I can just use it as is. I'm going to select the plane. We'll change this collection to be panel. So pretty quick and easy to use. It's going to ignore the cutter. When it comes to rendering, it's just how it it works. So if, if you didn't remove your cutter and you are using it as just the parent to hold everything together, that's fine. You can leave it in there. It's not going to end up in your render. It's just going to be used as the bounding box. Okay, that was our quick run through of how to use a K-Pack insert from KidOps with Spock. Uh, it's one of the quickest ways that you can fill a space. It's the only way that I know of that it will carry all of the hierarchy of parent and children relationships. You can use it with a number of other techniques and you know reuse all of the assets that you have in your K-Packs. Feel free to come ask questions at any time in the Discord. I'm looking forward to see what you guys do with this.